Now it's important to also appreciate that the movements of the upper arm in the socket, the glenohumeral joint, will affect the movements of the scapula. So in this case, as soon as I turn the shoulders inwards, look what happened to the scapula. The shoulder blade moved forward. So internal rotation of the glenohumeral joint is associated with scapular protraction. External rotation of the shoulder joint is associated with scapular retra retraction. And further to that, internal rotation of the shoulder associated with protraction of the shoulder blade is associated with spinal flexion. External rotation of the shoulder blade is associated with spinal retraction with the shoulder retraction and spinal extension. This doesn't have to happen, but unless a person knows that's what could happen, then it starts to happen by itself. So I can turn the shoulder out and flex the spine. And I can turn the shoulder in and extend my spine. But most people won't. Most people, if you simply ask them to turn the shoulder out, will automatically extend the spine. And if you ask most people to turn the shoulders inwards, they will automatically flex the spine. So it's important to understand these associated movements because it's the associated movements then that can make it easier or more difficult to get into postures. So for example, if I want to take my left hand to grab my left leg in a half lotus forward bend like this, the pathway I choose to take with my left arm will make a difference. In the final position, you can see that my left shoulder is turned inwards. It's turned inwards and it's adducted. But if I choose to start the movement by turning the shoulder inwards, my shoulder blade will go forward. And that will make it much more difficult to reach my foot. In the final position, the left shoulder blade is fully pulled towards the right shoulder blade. So in this final position, you can see my shoulder blades have been adducted. The shoulder blades rather have been retracted, pulled closer together. But retraction is associated with external rotation. So if I want to get to the position more easily, rather than turn the shoulder inwards, which moves my shoulder blade in the wrong direction, it's better to begin the movement with the external rotation of the shoulder, which is associated with the retraction of the shoulder blade. And now my shoulder blade is in the right position, and then I internally rotate the shoulder, and I can come much more easily to the foot. So you can try this for yourself in the two different ways. Turning the shoulder out first, then in, brings the hand much closer to the foot. But turning the shoulder inwards first, what seems like the shortcut, you can't get as close. But as soon as you turn the shoulder out first, it puts the shoulder blade in the right position, then you turn the shoulder in, and straight away the leg is much closer. And so this is an important thing that when you appreciate when one uh, movement is associated with another movement, then it makes it much easier to get into different positions.